Well, if that pointed at him to go by, <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Lovely team. Yeah, already so much spin from Jung Grake there. The forehand, she can pretty much do anything on the court. the one difference in terms of the journeys between Steve these two players is that the lady in your picture there, Yafan Wong, actually spent more time in China, particularly over the last few years. She's been based at home a lot more than Chin Wenzhong, who has been at a base in Europe for so much of her career. I think also it shows in their personalities. You can see that Wong spending much more time in China. You know, she's got that unbelievable fighting attitude, very, very compact. Where with Jung, having spent so much time in Europe, you see it with the spin, with the personality. It's just uh, it's nice to see the difference depending on where you actually spend your, a lot of your training weeks. Let's pursue. Yeah, the Chinese over the last decade, probably more, Danny, have, have invested a lot in foreign coaches, haven't they? I'm sure you know plenty. The, a couple I know, Scott Davidoff, among them, went over to China, spent a lot of time there to develop and, and impart the knowledge on Chinese players to assist them with their careers. You can already see that variety. Well, there are two ways to look at it, Nick. I mean, you either bring the knowledge from abroad bro and put it into the system, or you take the players and bring them either to Europe or America. There is no right or wrong way to do it, uh, as we can see today. Both ways are quite a good example that it can work, um, just bringing different ideas. Uh, one thing they always had all the Chinese players, it was the work ethic and uh, and the number of hours they spent on the court. I think personally it's wiser to actually bring the players either to Spain or to Italy or just have them see world in a different way so that it opens up their, their personalities. Yeah. But as you said, the, the case has been more, you know, let's bring the brains and the best coaches of the world to us and kind of learn from them. I think the most famous and the, one of the very first ones was definitely Carlos Rodriguez. Yeah. Followed Lina and then stayed there and created his own academy. Yeah, Lina, who is going to be your partner yes. next week, you were just yep. telling me. Yeah, super excited. Nice to see her back as well. Yeah, she's playing the legends with Danny. I'm not sure uh, what's the deal with Petko. We need to find out. 15. <laughs> Well, why don't we ask ourselves, yeah. what's happening, Petko? What's, what's the update there? I will be playing too, but nice. um, don't worry, Daniela, you don't have to worry. I, about I <laughs> am worried because last time we actually spoke was on a single court in Luxembourg and Petko absolutely destroyed me, so I am worried, that's why I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's got some good feel as well. Mm -hmm. Already quite a few higher balls from Jung 
using that spin beautifully and something Wong will need today big time as well to add some variety like that last drop shot smart play you mentioned that run to the last eight of the US Open last year for Zhong Had some good wins beat Ons Jabur in the last 16 before losing to Sabalenka on Arthur Ashe Stadium in the quarterfinals the door open but nonetheless a good pass 15 and 30. it's been quite impressive first two games of this match I think it also comes down to that both girls know each other so well they kind of move before the other one hits which always makes the matchup a really high quality match example there because when you do hit with a lot of spin 30. it opens the angle mm. you can create a bit more width Danny as a result of it yeah a little bit of a rougher style here going yeah. almost with this one now behind her head kind of swing so it's very unusual to see that from a Chinese player and uh, it creates so much more spin and height with her forehand yeah Hawkeye actually told me before this match and they obviously do a lot of trawling into the data that Zhang had the highest average spin rate, both forehand and backhand combined, of any player on the WTA Tour in the top 50 last season. So again, wow. that really emphasizes mm. the sort of ball that she hits. The sun just came out, not easy with the bolters. Oh. Yeah, you could kind of see that coming. Yes. And I'm sure Andrea and myself can relate to that. The first match on the road labor is never easy. It's not only the serve, but the shot afterwards. You're struggling big time. Yeah. Particularly this time of day, yeah, presumably. Yeah, yeah. So, tricky times for the server here. Oh. It's almost like, like you want to hit a kick serve, and the slower the serve, the better. So it gives you more time to get used to the sun for the shot afterwards. So I wouldn't be surprised if first serve here could be a kick serve. That wouldn't be a bad option. Fashion dump volley. Well, that did the trick nicely. And she Very cements the break. It. Yeah, and just from from the sidelines, her ball is so heavy. King went. So, if Yafan doesn't get it on the rise and it jumps above her shoulder, it looks like it's so hard for her to control because just the rotation you guys mentioned, it's really ve very obvious from the side here. It really, especially now with the sun coming out, it really bounces 
so quickly and so highly after it bounces in the court. Andrea is so right, that's Love where it. Chinese tennis has involved so much because back when we were playing, if you see Chinese name next to yours or Japanese, it's okay, flat ball, you're going to have to bend down and just stay low because that's what you're going to get where this match is a complete opposite of that and it's so nice to see. Is that style a little more a consequence of being in Europe, Danny? Do you yep. think possibly playing on other surfaces where you naturally are inclined to hit with a bit more spin? Yeah, for sure. And also the coaches she has spent time with, you know, Justin Henna, one of the best forehands we ever had. So I think she's been told the right way right from the beginning. And like I said, it goes also back to, you know, just seeing different culture, opening up yourself as a person just gives that already gives you on its own, I think, different look at your game. Easy when you get behind in the point against her, is it? Yeah, because she's so such a tall girl. It's also that physicality and the way she follows through after the shot puts even more pressure on her opponent. So yeah, you don't want to be on the back foot. Yeah, good look at the grip there. You can see it's just a little further around, isn't it, than some? Yep. Fantastic hitting from both players. 13, Great quality so far in this match. There's the forehand heaviness that we've been looking at a lot over the course of the week. So that factors in the spin, the bounce, everything that goes with that. has started so impressively out here as the 12th seed. She's raced into a three-love lead. Really allowing her opponent any time to kind of settle on the ball. Mm. And I don't know what you guys think, but it, she reminds me with the forehand, as we discussed, a little bit of Carlos' si signature there of Justin Henna with the spin. She's able to create combined with Alina Beckhand, so yeah, not a bad combination to have. Yeah, not a bad combination at all. The one thing, but this is really on a highest level, uh, complaining on the highest, highest level possible. The one thing she could still improve a bit when the ball drops short, she sometimes is a bit slow in recognizing it and hits it be standing behind the baseline. I think she could rush her opponents even more if she was up to that quicker. But I have to say, I'm so impressed by Wang's attitude. She's nothing but positive. She keeps telling herself to keep going and just is nodding her head along. And I'm just so impressed by her positivity. I can tell why she's turned that match around in the first round. Winner of the Asian Games as well, last September. And if you've been around Chinese tennis, you'll understand how big a deal that is. It may not necessarily register at times for those sort of tennis fans, casual tennis fans, but the Asian Games for the Chinese is significant, Danny. Oh, absolutely, Nick. I noticed that because uh, I was quite close to Lina, and that was a big deal. It was almost more important than slams, I would say, yeah. for them. So it's huge to be able to win that. Oh. It was a very good autumn for her as well because the, she then went on to win a tour event in China, in Zhengzhou. Ah. 
15 and and it's going to be a big summer with the Olympic Games as well. We know how obviously important that is, how high up the list that is for so many Chinese athletes. Ball. Okay. Interesting ball toss, though. What do we think there? It almost feels like it's a it's a double toss, isn't it? Like mm. she kind of stops on the way. She gets away with it. It's very precise. Yeah. But it's definitely different. I don't know what it looks like from close up for Andrea, but there's a yeah. It's almost like two motions in one. Fourteen love. I mean, I would love to have had two motions in one if I was serving like this. <laughs> but you're absolutely yep. right. She's stopping right before she tosses the ball. What helps her, she keeps her wrist fairly stable. And I think that's why she's quite consistent on the ball toss, despite the little stop. Yep. And unusual, isn't it? And I feel like we're picking apart a serve that's doing a lot of damage. But the racket face is very open, mm -hmm. isn't it? At the back of the swing, which again is a little more unorthodox. But, you know, she's a great example that what we always say, it doesn't really matter how you get there, it's what you do in the moment of the impact. And that's where she does everything right. She gets up as high as possible. She uses her legs beautifully. So, yeah, maybe not ideal to get there the way she does, but she definitely gets away with it. And she's been serving impressively well today. Yeah, just the three points lost on serve so far. It's a shame because she's done everything right in that point. Love it. And she does need a little bit of luck now here to get on board. Let's first. a whole lot for a while in the COVID period. Two or three years of not competing that much. I'd like to see that play a little bit more often, just get a kick serve out wide, especially in the edge side, and look to come in because she's got beautiful volleys. Yeah, Wong's ranking last year actually started around the 400 mark. She had some injuries as well, but she ended it just on the cusp of the top 100, so was a, a sizable move in the rankings from her last year. Yeah, much more aggressive game on her serve for Wang. This is the, what she has to try to do, shorten up the rallies, look to be the more ag aggressive one with her first two shots. is up and running and it's taken 20 minutes but she's on the board here trailing by a couple of breaks in the first I think Danny is absolutely right. It just seems the longer the point is going, the more the heaviness of Jung's forehand is hurting Wang. And we just saw now that when she tries and shortens the point up, come to the net, just go for a bit more, that's when she can take time away from Jung. How hard is it, Andrea, to break the spin when you've got someone hitting heavy ball like that? Is it a case of just trying to take it before it, it jumps too high? What's the sort of the game plan there? 
Well, I think you have two options, right? Either take it on the rise, which is very hard to do, or you go all the way back and you let it drop again, but that opens up the court and you have to do so much running. You have to be so quick on the feet and you have to have such good court coverage to pull that off, but that's possible too. That's what you see with Rafa Nadal, for example, who takes a step back and just runs everything down. They had a record crowd a year ago on Super Saturday. Almost 100,000 fans came through the gates on this very day, and I suspect we'll be close to being around that number once again. Ticket sales have been very impressive indeed through the first six days. As this event continues to grow in stature. And also going back, Nick, to what Andrea was just saying about whether you take it on the rise or you go back and let the ball bounce, it depends so much on the day. Because sometimes you just wake up and for no reason you are timing the ball beautifully and ideally, if you can, to take it on the rise, I think it's always the better option. But there are some days you just either have to wait for it that it's going to come to you at some point during the match or just accept that you will do a little bit more running. Yep. Causing all sorts of problems with this first delivery at the moment. It's not just the pace, is it? She is hitting the spots mm. so well right yeah. now. Picking up the targets big time also, mixing it up, so it's hard for Wong to guess where she's going to serve. Yeah, there's a good look at the pace. Ah. 30 on. And I guess there we see the one downside of that grip when you just get the ball coming into you a bit quicker, Danny, right? Yep, 100%. That's where ideally Wong should try to hit her returns deep in the middle of the court, targeting Jung forehand if she can. Just didn't quite have time on that occasion. Even there, that was the right point for Wong, just going a little bit too close to the lines. But I like the way she's thinking out there. Let us... to live with that, no matter who you are. Zheng leads five games to one. Interesting release, isn't it, as mm. well? Bit of a cricket motion there. It <laughs> is. It? it really is. But she gets up so beautifully, using every bit of her height. It's one of the best serving days I've seen from her. Yeah. Wasn't afraid to express her frustration, was she, last year when Wim Fissett decided to move away and go and work with Naomi Osaka. There was mm. some clear disappointment yeah. that that relationship had broken down.
Yeah, unfortunately not the first time we've seen something like that happening. Mm -hmm. Of course, not just been a successful year for the women from China, but the men as well are really starting to follow now. Zhang Zhijian last year broke the top 100, as did Wu Yibing. Yep. First Chinese male ever to be inside the top 100, so. It'll be interesting for him. Carlos Alcaraz today to, for the first time, to have to face someone that's younger than him. Fourteen. Yes. In his Chinese opponent. Something he's not used to. Yeah. Jerry Zhang, who spent a lot of time in Florida at the IMG yep. Academy. Oh. Game one. A couple of good holds. New at least place. given a, a foothold. And something to work with moving forwards here. Zheng beats five games to two. At the 12th seed, 5 2. Difficult not to look at the draw, Danny, when it's opened up. I mean, how, how did you manage that in your career? You were obviously one of the top seeds so often, but um, how many players are able to block that out when, yeah, when you've I lost some players? I don't think too many, and uh, it's so important. Literally, we always say it, and it's a cliche, but to take it one day at a time. and. I, I didn't like it much um, when you suddenly feel like your part of the draw is opening up. I always did better if I had tough opponents around me and I kind of knew I had to play my the best tennis to kind of get through uh, those rounds. Um, it's so hard these days not to look at the draw, especially with all the social media and, and what the journalists ask you. So I prefer not to know, but at the end of the day, somehow you can't help it, but somehow you're going to find out that you are in the better section of the draw. Time. At the United Cup uh, at the start of the year, and Chin Wenzhong had a couple of good wins there down in Perth. A very successful United Cup this year. Of course, Germany prevailing in the end when all is said and done. Opportunity to play matches, though, so invaluable in the early part of January. Oh. Yeah, that's why United Cup, Hoffman Cup, there was such a cool events and are because you know you have matches guaranteed. When you come to down to Australia, that's the number one thing you're looking for to get as many matches behind your belt, whether it's singles, doubles, before you head to Melbourne. Ah. Some good work defensively. Love the World number 94. And it's Andrea 
was saying Wong is having such a beautiful attitude out here, even though she's down big time in this set. Suddenly she has a little opportunity here, just because she's there for every single point, no matter how good her opponent is playing today. Let's pursue. It's lovely movement off the serve, isn't she? I mean, it's one thing to hit the wide serve, but it's another then to get it turning as she does. Yeah, and hit it that short. Yeah. That's where she uses her height beautifully to be able to create that angle that only really tall players can do. Yeah, just shy of six foot by the official tally. Oh. Yeah, great rally there, but it's that second serve. She's not holding back, and you know? she's really going close to the line. Being very effective with it today. And again. Even when she reads the serve, like it looked as though she did there, she's still not able to get to it. That's the quality of it. More than half are unreturned. That's how good it's been. Set point. a little bit too ambitious to go up the line with the depth that Wong was able to create on her back end. Slight issue with spider cam. So the spider cam just dropped by two meters, and it was actually very scary. I know people are laughing, but it's a bit, it's like a hysteric laughter a little bit. <laughs> pa panic laughter. Right? Yes, panic laughter. Like, yeah, I'm laughing, but I'm also really scared because it dropped by two meters, and the cables are keeping it up. They pulled it back up again, but it was a bit scary for a second. I think they may just want to hold this a second just to make sure that it is stable. Just hold on, hold on a second. It's still moving up there, so let's see. Thankfully, where it is right now is in a relatively safe place in terms of... Yeah, it's it looks not like it's stable now. Yeah. It looks like it's fine now. Yeah. It's not over the fans, and it's not anywhere near really <laughs> underneath anybody.
Yeah, it was a great return there from Wong, targeting that forehand middle. Advantage, Wong. From Zhong, it's definitely the way to play in this match. Ball. A little bit of fortune, more than a little in truth. And she's able to secure her first break of the afternoon. And she has deserved that fortune with her attitude. She could have easily said, oh, my opponent is just playing too good today. But she can hang in there, and now she's got a, every bit of the chance to come back in this first set. Some ingenious <laughs> headwear that has been uh, brought today. Would you wear one of those? When we have a hit together. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's leave it for that, Danny. Okay. <laughs> Just hanging in the points a little longer right now. Yep. Fifty nine. be honest, the start was so impressive, wasn't it, from the 12th seed that you almost kind of feel she's adjusting a little bit to the ball now. It's taken half an hour or so. And let's not forget in her previous match against Katie Butter, it took her, what, seven, eight match points to close up the match. So there are bits and pieces in the match where she does get a little bit tighter. Yeah. Yeah, that's the play we were saying with Andrea that ideally she should try to do as much as possible. Wong to open up the court with her serve and be really aggressive with the first shot afterwards. I think the shorter the rally, the better for her. If I'm reaching the third round here, her ranking is going to jump some 20 spots into the mid 70s. Of course, the first time, of course, she's actually made the third round at a major championship. Very special defense. And then to turn it into offense was breathtaking. 30, 40. Yeah, she would love to close out the first set here if she can, not having the pressure to serve for it. Let's go. Coach, understanding the importance of this next point. And this is just what I meant earlier in the match. The one short ball, she played Jeez. that beautiful heavy forehand and got the short ball and opted to go back behind the baseline rather than try and take it on the rise. I think that's one department of her game 
when she improves that she will be very very dangerous in major tournaments one of the longest rallies we've had so far Tough to see that coming. Just takes the net out of play, doesn't she, because of the, the flight of the ball. So when you're going up the line, there's less risk involved. Yeah, she has so much freedom to swing at the ball because of the security with her wrist and how much spin she's able to create. One of the best forehands has to be on the tour. Yeah, it really is. Early strike, paying dividends for her. Advantage one. Doesn't quite have the pace off the serve that her opponent does. Job of hanging tough here. Fifteen. Smart change up there with the serve going to the body. Yeah, first serve points one have been outstanding. 14 of 18 thus far. Fortunately. How often has she found that particular spot? It's the serve that really got her to the set points now, because from the back of the court, it's been a very, very even match. Brilliant way to close out the opening set here for the 12th seed, who is halfway towards a place in the last 16.
know, so much of, of the attitude and what you show in between the points. It's not only about the match you play, but also sending the right message to the rest of the locker room for the rest of the season. And what they see from Wong, all the players understand, especially how she was able to come back against Sorana, that they have to be bringing their A game on because she's not going to give up mentally. And that, you know, that's such a strong statement statement to have behind your name. Building a reputation yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And ideally, you want to keep that for the entire career, knowing that you're always going to fight no matter what. Let it for soon. Use of the body serve again. First game, second set. She has started the second in many ways, how she finished the first. Yeah, and she only used the body serve once in the first set, but I wouldn't be surprised if she, if we see many more of those in the second set. I think definitely it's the right play for Wong. Andrea, you're recently retired. How did the women's game change throughout your career uh, over the, the decade that you were playing? Plus, did it, did it change in any way from your perspective? Uh, from my perspective, it, de it definitely did. When I was in my best, I really worked a lot with my physicality. That was my advantage. I was limited in my tennis skills, but I was mentally tough and I was really physical. I feel like now I couldn't be in the top 10 anymore just because everyone is physical, physically just at the A game. Everyone is traveling with their trainers and their fitness coaches. And that was my one advantage that I had over the other women and I think that now physicality is not as much a factor anymore because everyone has that in the top. It's enough. You agree Danny? Uh, absolutely. That, that, that's exactly how I felt back in my day that I think even more so before Andy that you know I was one of the very few to actually be in the gym and so my goal was to get to the third set and then I just knew physically I was gonna last longer than my opponents or most of them. Oh. And guys, something is really jumping to my Fifteen. eye here. King Wen is hitting the ball much harder, but Jafan makes up for it by taking the ball really early. That's how she takes time away from her opponent, by just trying to move into the court the minute the ball drops short. She's doing a really great job right now at that. Ball. Oh. Yeah, it's interesting, Andrea, because I actually had a really good chat with Yako Elting about a couple of years ago about this very subject. And, and he was saying to me that obviously he works a lot with Dutch players. And, and he said to me one of the lessons that a lot of young players don't understand is that there's a big difference between hitting hard and hitting early. Mm. Uh, and the value at times there is of taking the ball that much earlier. Obviously, it depends individually, Danny, on size of swings, it comfort means. levels. But but it's he said it, it's important for young players to understand the difference between the two because there is obviously a big difference. It's a huge difference, and I think especially it helps for players like myself. I wasn't as strong as Andrea physically, but I made up for it just taking the ball on the rise and and gaining my strength that way.
hopefully if she got away with the first one there. <laughs> right on the baseline. 30, 40. Yeah, this, this was the risky one. That's unlucky, wasn't it? Ball. Well, it's a bit of a gift in the end. And it is the perfect start to the Wong second for Yafan Wong. Just going back, Nick, quickly to what you were saying about taking the ball early or hitting the ball hard. I think for the junior players, it's so important to understand the importance of the footwork because so many of them at the younger age, they can move incredibly well sidelines mm -hmm. and hit the ball hard. But once you learn how to move in the V position back mm -hmm. and forwards, I think that's where you can make the biggest difference in your game, whether you are strong physically or not. Yeah. 50 enough. Just by understanding the positioning on the court a little bit better. And as Andrea said, that's what Yafan Wang has done so beautifully well today. She wasn't overwhelmed by the power and the spin of Jung. Kind of protected that baseline, ready to move in whenever she can. Let for some. Ball. Starting to make a few questionable decisions. Yeah, already four unforced errors in the second set. Definitely, she feels like she needs to rush the ball a little bit more. Ball. Seconds. Ah. Yeah, that's number 11 down. of the first 14 points in this second set. And they've gone this lady's way. Real shift in momentum here. Accelerating on, and she's got a very healthy lead here at the start of the second. It's three love. Wong leads three games to love. Starting to play a few more points on her own terms as well, which will be even more encouraging. She's done such a great job weathering the storm in the first set. High ball toss on that serve, isn't it? Mm. Danny? Yeah, yeah, it gives her time to really use her legs well and go after the ball. So even though she's not one of the tallest players, she makes up for it with her great leg work on the serve. Yeah, look how she gets underneath yep, the ball. Yep. And she's very compact with all her shots. And just looking at her forehand here in slow motion, she, she's able to create nice spin as well. Time. Of the 32 seeds in the ladies' draw that began, there are actually only nine left, incredibly. Uh, it's incredible. But having said that, we had, had so many fantastic headlines and stories. And 
Yeah, my personal one is definitely Mira Andreeva and what she's able to cause so far the attention in this tournament, but nothing to take away from this part of the draw as well. Yeah, she plays Barbora Krachikova in the last 16. That's a match that stands out. Igor Sviontek against Linda Noskova. That's mm -hmm. got potential today. dealt with nicely. Well, she's having to work really hard in these Fifth rallies. Seven. I think the more shape she's able to create with her forehand, the more opportunities she will have to come inside of the court. And as Andrea has been saying, something she can still improve. 13. Wow. Rare early defeat for Jess Pagula at a major. That hasn't mm. happened too often, has it, in yeah. the last couple of years? But the American losing early yesterday. Yeah, one of the most consistent players we've got on the tour. Fault up. And one thing I really love about Wang Yafan, whenever she misses a ball, she makes a visual correction technique-wise right away, and it's like she erases it from her brain like it never happened. It's a very smart thing she does there. Game check. Gonna wear that line out pretty soon if she keeps hitting it. One needs three Which has been the consistency with which she's found that serve. Yeah, it's a technique that what Andrea has been referring to that a lot of players use these days more so than back in our times. Where it's such a good way to kind of train your brain to clean up the technique right away when you miss something, especially the easy balls that you want to forget. Thirteen up. Consistency of the first serve is improving, has made eight from 11 in this set. Consistency and the accuracy. Faulty love. Again, that's where that grip just sometimes is a little trickier when it's coming in there with pace to get around it. Has only lost the one point on serve in three holds in this one second set. And as a result, one. she stretched her lead.
time. Thirty seventh year that they've been playing here in Melbourne Park and how things have changed over the years in terms of the expansion of the grounds and the improvements that they've made. So much to do when you're not watching the tennis as well. And he is a wonderful stage. 59. <laughs> she cannot hit that serve any better. Yeah, those numbers firmly illustrating just how effective the first delivery has been for this lady today. Bit lucky there Even with the miss hit. Or Wang. No, go for it. How hard she has to work for the rallies in the second set. Yeah. I like the fact she hit the bounce smash with a lot of spin. And it gave it a mm. bit more control, didn't it? It's always tricky. The one off the bounce. It looks like an easy ball, but it's not if you don't practice it enough. Yeah. And this one she did take early and she didn't have to hit it as hard and it was nowhere near long to get back into the court. So I think that is really an area of her game. Once she gets that in order, it's going to be very, very tough to beat her in major tournaments. said last year, didn't she, after she lost to Sabalenka on Arthur Ashe Stadium, that that match was such a learning experience for her. Uh, you must have felt that in the early part of your career, Danny, playing on big stages, that how you sort of get that comfort level in the biggest arenas. Yeah, 100%. Nick. It's not only playing on the biggest stage, but also against the biggest players, where you kind of slowly start to realize, well, hold on a second, I, I have the level. First, you have to go through the matches where you lose to those opponents. But then once you understand that you your tennis me. is just as good as theirs, that's when you slowly start to build Long the momentum and confidence. And uh, yeah, I think this year she will be very difficult to stop. And sometimes you have to go through matches where you lose to the top players in a very tight way. It, it's got to hurt you first before you have that belief that, okay, next time I'm in that situation, I'm just not going to let it go. Is there much of a gap, Andrea, between the sort of top three or four? If you look at Sviontek, Sabalenka, Rybakina, Goff, three of the four are major champions. Is there is there a big gap? Do you think between those and, and the rest right now, or or not necessarily? Oh. I do think there is a gap. I don't Seems think it's a huge gap or a gap that is not that is insurmountable. I think that especially for players with the potential of Xiong here. I think they can close that gap very quickly, but I do think there is a gap right now. Help! 
And I think to close that gap, it's about having more consistency Easy. in your game. When you look at those four or five players we just mentioned, looking at the rankings, I think with Jess Pegula, that's when the consistency really finishes. So everyone can hit the forehands back and just as good. Mm. But it's about showing up on every single big stage, whether it's slams, big tournaments, and proving it week after week that you belong there as well. Oh. And that's where Shmiantek has done such an incredible job mentally being always consistent and that's why she's number one in the world. That it's that relentless pressure she puts on her opponents from the first point mentally more than anything. And she was certainly off that Third return. Time. And now I just wish if she gets the slice wide that she puts it with a bit of margin into the center of the court because she keeps going for the down the line return and she hasn't made one in the second set. Okay, yeah, she was like this before, yeah. First. Oh, but the change up All proved to be a valuable one. change in the unreturned serve number. Significant. Game one. And she's added to that value as well. And it does look as though we could well Rodley's be heading the distance on the opener on Rod Laver. growing in belief. What a point that was. Love, uh, 15. Such a smart defense there from Wong. Not doing too much when she wasn't in the position and then stepping in as soon as she had an opportunity. point and how has Yafang Wong been able to win it wonderful footwork there Love from her that. ready to react wasn't a bad play from Zhung throwing in that slice forehand couple of extraordinary gets Great hustle. Oh. Ah. Fifteen and thirty.
it's untidy. 15 14. It's because of all the wonderful defense her opponent has done in the second set. She feels like she needs to go closer and closer to the lines. Yeah, just planted a seed of doubt, hasn't she? And we have a couple of set points to square things up here. In a rather ignominious way to end the set. A set for one of these two. Ball. Love uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Wong has done such a good job to kind of take the rhythm away from Zhong, who could not hit the ball any better in the first set. Yeah. The same authority, 30, 30. Either, even when she's got time on the ball right now. And I think it's because she's done such a good job tactically to take away the forehand from Jung game in the second set. Now, even when she has the time to hit it well, because she hasn't really done it for the last half an hour, she's struggling to find the rhythm. So brilliant tactically from Yafan. Much better. A fantastic variety from both players there. Thirteen. So, even though again she won that rally, Jung, she must be feeling so much pressure that this is what it takes to win rallies the last couple of minutes against her opponent. Just catching her a little by surprise, exploiting a bit of space up the line. Chung Win Jen just looked a little laboured getting out there.
Yeah, it's so smart again. When you look at the placement Advantage one. of one shots, it's either middle of the court or back inside. Trying to stay away from the forehand big time. And there's nothing wrong to go to Jung forehand when it's in the middle of the court. Yeah. Trouble comes if you go to the corner there without enough pressure. Game one. She was able to come through an early test on fantasy. serve. Yeah. When you consider she was 5 2 down in the first, Danny, she has accumulated a lot of games in the last 45 minutes. Yeah, I was just going to say, Nick, that she's done such a brilliant job kind of breaking up, down the rhythm and the way. Jung was playing in that first set just by staying there mentally and tactically. Brilliant match. It shows how much she's thinking out there. Ideally, you always want to look for things, how you can change it up. Ideally, you want to keep doing what wor works for you, but kind of change it before your opponent figures it out. And she's done an amazing job with that today. Good news in the big picture for Chinese women's tennis is that they're all very young, relatively speaking. Mm. You look at the seven players inside the top 100, there's only two that are over 25. There's a, a lot in the early 20s, so room for growth, perhaps, as they get more experience. Ball. The junior draw was made yesterday. Makes interesting reading to see some of the names that are, are involved. There's a certain Hewitt in the boys' draw, which I found interesting. Of course, Leighton's son is actually playing the boys this year. Yeah, he will be drawing a lot of attention. <laughs> From my personal end, there is a Slovak girl, Yamrichova, okay. who we have a lot of hopes for. They're Inter talking about her as the our big future. Interesting. I think she's number three in the world okay. at the moment. Yeah. Big lefty, tall girl as well. Ah. I think a name we're going to hear a lot in the future. Mm -hmm. First time I hit with her, she was 12, <laughs> and I could not believe the power and the strength behind her shot. And where does she base? Where does she's, she train? She's in the National you Center. Sometimes I would hit, we'd hit with her, but not anymore these days because it just gets too frustrating. She she hits a big ball. It reminds me so much of Petra Kvitova. No plan B, but the plan A. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Ball. Game is in. It's a good serving. A little more like what we saw earlier in the game opening game. set. Yeah, she needed that service game big time, even though it's only second game of the third set, kind of stopped the momentum on the other side of the court. The next couple of minutes are crucial. More from Jung's perspective, I would say. Because she needs to find that rhythm quickly. As she has in that first set. That was quite impressive. Fifty nine.
love the way she gets underneath the ball when the ball's coming at her with force. She That's uses it. her legs to as a base yep. so effectively, doesn't she? Yeah, she's such a strong athlete, very compact. Basically, she plays the shots with her legs more than her opponent. Zhong uses more her arm because of her height. Oh. Yeah, the great so trainer Gil Reyes used to have a saying that he used to say, weak legs command, strong legs obey, in terms of just having that fundamental base. Really are the engine room so often, aren't they, of a, a player's strength, all the power of the ground comes, of course, from the ground reaction force. I love her attitude. Mm. Not overwhelmed at all who is on the other side of the court. Faulty <laughs> thirty. and every strike had a little more attached to it before she finally Jeez. was able to breach the defenses of her opponent. Yeah, she hasn't quite teed off as much until this point for a very long time. In the first set, she has been doing that much more, that extra infliction of pace. was a little wasteful from the number 12 seed for the GF and one that leads early on here in set number three. Well, so she's been broken as well, isn't it? But a consistently hold serve. It's a little bit too ambitious there. <laughs> she should have let it bounce and hit the forehand. It's really the angle to do this. Yeah. Players have been lucky that it's been cloudy so far because once the sun will come out, it will get really hot quickly. But so far, this tournament, the conditions been Sorry. so, so pleasant. Still very much in the balance here 
to begin Super Saturday on Rod Laver Arena. Oh. Fifteen of Talk about interest in China. I was actually reading on the plane over here when, when you look through the fact sheet that the viewership of this event last year in China was almost up 50%, which again goes to show the growing interest in tennis. Well, let's not forget when Lina was playing here. Yeah. I mean, it was all about yeah. <laughs> when she will be scheduled and then the rest of the tournament, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. I mean, she was bringing in 100 million plus at times, yeah. wasn't she? To watch her matches. I mean, Andrea will Fair remember this as well, but just the exposure Lina would have when we came to China, all the breaks in between games, I think every single commercial she was on, and then obviously having the center in Wuhan built yeah. literally just for her. Yeah, it was quite something what she was able to create in her own country. And the reason why we like we are looking at these two players today, it's it's got a lot to do with her. Yeah, trailblazer, I guess you could describe her as. Well, and I was unlucky enough to play her on this court right here Fonsman. on Rod Laver Arena <laughs> in 2011. And I'm going to tell you this, <laughs> it w I did not feel good about it at all. <laughs> she destroyed me. But at least you came second, Andrea. Could be worse. Game second. Well, you have the chance now. And to pay her back when we play the legends. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Relieved those moments. But yeah, she definitely brought something special every time she stepped on the court here in Melbourne. She was also one of the players coming from China, went to Europe, mm -hmm. trained a lot in Germany mainly. Yeah. There's the work on the ball. Really can prove so dangerous. Another 15. Give yourself a bit more time as well on this one. Missed a couple of those of late. I feel like now is the time for Jung to step it up. Because it feels like Yofan cannot play any better. No. Nope. Hasn't had Love 30 very often, has she, of late either? Well, this is a real opening. Oh. Smart, second serve. 15 30. Yeah, Jung will be disappointed. She could have had a better footwork there to run around for the forehand. Serve felt long to start with. 
No, she can't believe she missed that. That was huge. She had the fist pump out here, didn't she? Quickly deflated, though. A couple of mistakes from this lady that we just haven't seen for a while. I've opened the door for the 12th seed. First look at a break point in the third. able to capitalize on it and she has made the first move in the decider Zing these three games to two yeah there was so much more patience there from Zhuk Rakett with the forehand still dictating but with much more security and he was kind of Expected to come at some point for Yafan to drop her levels a little bit because for the last what 45 minutes, I don't think she could have played any better. Time. First break of the serve of Yafeng Wang for quite some time. How pivotal is it going to prove to be? Down the stretch here. Oh. A little bit what we discussed in the first set, the, the ball toss no, of June. It's interesting also from the point of view that when she starts the motion, it's more of a kind of a man's serve in a way that the guys just turn the shoulders much more than us. Mm -hmm. Almost like when Pete Sampras was going to toss the ball, then there is that strange movement and then it's back to normal. Yeah. So you go from like, oh wow, to oh no, and then oh wow, to again. <laughs> it's been frugal on serve in this set, just lost the one point so far in the third. Oh. So she's got such a beautiful follow through on the serve. 30, By the time she lands, I mean, she's a good half meter at least inside of the court.
Paul. That change up, that low ball that can be a little troubling when you've got an extreme grip like she has. 13. Perfectly placed. Oh. It was the depth coupled with the spin that just proved too hot to handle. Zheng leads four games to two. As the Chinese number one stretches her lead. She does such a good job with her forehand when she's pushed back and almost falling backwards. She's still able to generate so much spin and power, even though her energy is not going inside of the court. That's where the physicality makes a big difference. Couldn't resist taking it on, could she? Yeah, yeah Fan has done such a good job with throwing in those slice backhands. It's a variety. to go up the line, unlike off the slice backhand. This time she had 59. all the time in the world to prepare. Yeah, you don't want to go too often down the line for, of a slice, low shot. It's just too risky. Yeah, and there's the numbers, Danny. You can see how often she has gone to that slice. About 20%, so not a whole lot, but it feels like it's being introduced more, yep. doesn't it? That's something she should use even more so. Just guessing low on that one when you give the 12th seed that much time on the ball.
just stopped playing. That's unbelievable. The error of judgment that could prove to be 14 13. Definitely having to hit a lot of overheads today. And juice. And ideally, she would love to get another break here, just to have that extra cushion in this third set. Yeah, that second serve was just 128 k's. That was mm -hmm. short, and it got the treatment. Outstanding quality hitting from the 12th seed. I think the best uh, rally of this match so seven. far. Being able to come out with that backing up the line under pressure. This was such a smart forehand with extra shape to then allowing her to step inside of the court. ball into the forehand. Extracting the error. Advantage. Better. Ideally, she wants to play with first serves here because as soon as there is a second serve, Jeez. her opponent is going after the returns big time. Fifty-three percent yeah. for the first set is still pretty good, but you just want to play the big points with the first serve. Ideally. Ball. Wasn't by that uh, bad idea. Just a bit too close to the line. Trying to cling on here. Trying to stay in touch. Oh, 
tremendous resilience shown by the 29 year old who's hanging tough under pressure and she keeps it to just the one break in the third yeah that was a huge hold for Yafana. Owing she's still in this third set big time because it felt like she was on the charge there, didn't it? A little bit, just trying to hit the ball with a bit more confidence. She keeps her at bay for now. It's been such a high quality match from both players, right from the first point, really. So the Chinese fans are enjoying every single second of this. Time. Yeah. Looking to make the last 16 at a major for the third time is Chin Wen Chung. Did so initially at Roland Garros a couple of years ago where she actually took the opening set off Igor Sviontek before losing in three. And then, as we mentioned last year at the US Open, had the deepest run so far of her career, where she beat Ons Jabur in the last 16 before losing to Sabalenka. I can see her being really dangerous on clay with all the spin she's got and the physicality. It'll be interesting to see how well she can do on grass. That's where that forehand grip could be a little bit questioned. Yeah. But the rest of the season, I think we've got great things coming up from her racket. Ah. Yeah, this is a shot I would like her to use even more so that forehand short cross court because she's got such a beautiful wrist action that I would like her to see the opening of the court even more so. I think something she can still add to her game. Oh. Got a little lucky off the return. Well, she built on it impressively. Yeah, it's also that Feeling. forward movement that Andrea has been referring to throughout the match that she can do still a little bit better with. And that's what's exciting about Chin Wang Zhong that even though she's already so good, there is still a few things she can improve. And then really she's going to be going very deep into the big tournaments. Oh. Just lost a little bit of rhythm on the first. The numbers are dropping. That looked a little hesitant. 15 30. You're absolutely right, Nick. She completely decelerated on this shot right there. Just didn't hit through it at all. Almost stopped midway through the motion. No hesitation there. <laughs> and again, Third the job. benefit of having that kicker, that second serve, look where she strikes the return from, well above shoulder height here. It's a nightmare. I'd like her to use that more as a first serve as well. 
which is a surprise tactic. Thank you, please, please. It was a great recovery there with the backhand, especially for Jung. And she was pushed deep. crucial errors she wants to have another look at it but there is an inevitable outcome that's for sure I kind of love her frustration because it seems like it's a, in a very constructive way yeah. she is not happy with something it's for the good reason shows how clearly she's thinking out there Yafan Wang trying to figure out what to do on every single point to get it early, wasn't it? Take it before it dropped. Yeah, ideally, she wants to have a good hold here. Let's not forget it's only one break that she's down. Thirty fifteen. Left for soon. Ah. Absolutely impeccable depth. Fitzio. Just gave her no time to recover out of the serve. Yeah, that's where going up the line, it's a no-go when it's that deep. Just have to accept the bounce and either go back hard in the middle or back cross court. It's just way too risky. Forty. Thirty. He had some rewards though. That serve. Just challenging the contact on the forehand wing. Oh. 
witness. She will force the 12th seed to close this out here at 5-4. Five five For Yafan, it's crucial now to go back to what worked so well in the second set for her nick, and that is targeting the middle of the court and the backhand side just don't give showing any forehands really. Yeah. So try to cover the serves out wide. Wouldn't be surprised if Jung, especially in the due side, the very first point goes there because when you're tied, when you're serving for it, you ideally want to open up the court so that then you have more of a freedom, more of a space to hit your second shot when you are just be a little bit tighter given the occasion. Sorry. Given the opportunity to close up the match. had very little in it in truth in fact if you look at the total points tally there's only one point separating them over the course of two hours and 11 minutes yeah that's the serve that has worked so well throughout the match for Jung and yeah as you Easy said Nick, that pretty much sums up this match only one point between these two players, there's how little there has been between them. It's been very profitable, that wide serve on the juice out here this afternoon. Sometimes in this third set, she's been a little bit slower with her footwork on the backhand side, mainly Jung. Just been a couple of slightly uncharacteristic errors. And some big moments deep in this third set. throwing in those higher balls and then stepping in when she could. Third zero. Just brilliant. Such good movement off the ball, wasn't it? Off the loop. Yep. Just suddenly 
She was up the court and taking time away. There was no recovery from that. A big second. 30, 40. It was a big second, but she threw it very far in front of her. And while the ball was flying, I was already thinking, oh my God, I don't know if she can pull it off because it was really hard to pull a kick off from that far toss in the front. First serve has disappeared. She's rushing a little bit here. Yafang Wong breaks back. Her draws level in the process. She absolutely deserves to do that and get the break back because Kim she's been so consistent, so patient. And once again, we've been talking about it throughout the match, but it's that mental toughness and her fighting spirit. I think her previous opponents, Serena Kirsten and Emma Raducan, when they're watching this, probably they're not feeling as bad about their loss against Yafan because she's been exceptional. It's just over and over that down the line return. I feel like it's just a tactical mistake, really. When you get tight on that one, to get it over the highest point of the net is really, really hard. I'll take it back. best way to react to it. Try and see the funny side of it if you can. They can't believe it. Better on the back foot in this game, though. Footwork of Jung has been a little bit, a bit less explosivity in the third set. Nerves. Nerves. I mean, they've been on the court already, 217, 218. But it's not like it's hot. I would say it's more the nerves, yeah. Yeah. Just getting a little tight. And also the consistency of her opponent. Oh. It's edgy. There are mistakes coming. Struck the forehand a little later than she would otherwise like. And Yafang Wang has won back to back games here to get us off ahead. Six games to five. It's really hard to tell who the crowd 
wants to win more. And the only clues down there? I would say it's 50-50 pretty much. Isn't it, it is really hard and it keeps changing. <laughs> I feel like whenever Wong gets down, they are cheering on her more, but then now and it's it's really hard it's 50 50 yes it's 50 50 but they are both playing really well and yep. it's just a fun match to watch and uh, just also such different styles of play which is even more fun somehow so really a tactical game here real fun from down here yeah there is hardly anything both players have done wrong in this match today it's been very impressive Zone. The winner, I can tell you, will take on Ocean Dodan, the world number 95 who has come through in the last few minutes against Clara Burrell in straight sets. Just like with the crowd, it's really hard to tell which way this match is going to go. After two, two hours, 20 minutes, still very much on an even scale. And for Dodan, incidentally, that is the first time in her career she's made the last 16 of a major as well. So breaking new ground in her career. We are heading at pace towards a final set breaker. Ball. Faulty okay. love. C Faulty thirty. Yeah, worrying sign. I mean, late change of decision, wasn't it? Ended up in two minds. just a little too much. She found the forehand when needed. 
And for the fourth time in these Six championships in the seven. women's draw, Ladies and gentlemen, a ten it points will be a final ten. set tiebreak to settle the pair. And given how even this match has been, I feel like we've still got a lot of distance to go. Take a seat quickly, please. Thank you. Yeah, it's very loud down here. I think they let a few people in. Yes, they have. Now it's calming down. Wait, please, wait, please. Perfect start. One zero one. I think we will see a lot of these white serves. In this Bye -bye. last tie break. That has been the most effective serve for both players. At the end of the match, you just gotta stick with whatever has worked out the best for you throughout the match. Don't try to be too fancy. Just stick with the basics. Let let for soon. She rode her luck somewhat. There were a couple of forehands that were certainly far from clean. A one on. Yeah, she does that sometimes. Zoom that she, even when she mishits it, because there's so much extra spin on the ball, she gets away with it. Yeah. We'll go some way to replicating the final set breaker we had a couple of nights ago here, weren't we? That was 42 points, let's not forget, in that one. Blinkova and Rabakina. How long did it take? Like 20 minutes? Yeah, plus, I think. Ended up. It was 22 20. That's a long flight back home if you lose that one. Yeah. I would say from that perspective, it is probably one of the most cruel tournaments to play, especially for European players. Sure. If you lose a really close match, you know, those 24, 26 hours on the way back, you've got a lot of time to think about it, where normally, you know, when you fly back home, by the time you get to your house, you tend to forget about what happened, but not in this case. <laughs> Got a little bit lucky there. I think she she thought she missed that shot. Three, two, Zheng. Yeah, there was a good bit of body English here to try and yeah. swerve this back in <laughs> somehow, wasn't it? But again, that's where the shape just helped her a little bit, just to draw it back round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mini break for the twelfth seed. Oh. 
herself out of a significant hole. And she extends her lead. That was an incredible defense. Four, two, A couple of fantastic ten. slice backhands from Jung. I feel like this one maybe Gaffan could have gone cross court. But what an incredible passing shot to come up with. It's such an important stage of this third set. Yeah, calling on all her athleticism. Just to cling on. She's the one with the experience. She's the one that has competed deeper in majors a little more often. How much is that going to count at this stage? Two and a half hours exactly. These two compatriots have squared off. Five, two, the benefit there of actually having had such a physical point then to get the little refresh at the change of ends just to kind of gather herself. Yeah, and also now to get a kind of a free point with that serve, not having to play any extra long rallies. And a great reaction there from your fan. Super quick to move up the court after Five the net call. Three. Check. It's incredible the level of the tennis both girls have been able to keep up with yeah. throughout this entire match. Two and a half hours of exceptional hitting. And there's no drop off in quality. Right back at her. Five, four, the world number 94. She needs first serves big Six time here. Four, Zhang. Zhang, there's been so little in between them from the baseline. She make that. <laughs> Six five. Jack. One of the toughest returns to pull off, and she has made it look simple. Ease of which she struck it as well. It was so pure. Yeah, I was able to create a short cross court angle, except with her backhand. <laughs> Exceptional. Just couldn't live with her. The patience ran out eventually. From Chin Wen Zheng's perspective. Six on. And we are back to square. It's really hard to tell, in a way, who deserves this match more. 
It is the tension can be cut with a knife. I can't sit still. <laughs> this is insane. And I've been here for the Rybakina Blinkova, so I'm getting flashbacks here. And <laughs> I'm telling you, this quality of play is insane at this point of the match. It's two hours, 34. They are playing so well. It's anyone's to take. I normally would always favor in a tiebreak the one with a better serve because they do get three points every now and then. But at this stage, Yafan is playing so well. It's so, so hard to call. Well, it really is a significant day for Chinese tennis. And well, these two have delivered the goods. A match that is still firmly in the balance. Utilizing that Zeneca. slightly greater weight of shot, this time to a bigger target. I feel like Yafan has done such a good job not overreacting when she misses shots. She's so quick to bounce back, but the attitude of both players has been exceptional. Seven on. Oh my God, guys, it's spitting. Oh, rain drops are coming very, very lightly, but they are here. First delivery. Eight, Once again, seven. in evidence. Zing. That only just shy of her fastest serve of the day as well. And as far as total points one, we are back on even scale. 98 to 98. <laughs> really has been an intoxicating contest. Match point for the Chinese number one to move into the second week here in Melbourne. She has made that shot so many times in this match. Just shows the nerves and how much there is on the line. 9-8, Zheng. I've got to love her reaction. Moving on.
You can wish to see. Six, four, two, six, seven, six. It's Chin Wen Jun that prevails, overcoming her compatriot in three epic sets. She comes through 10 8 in the final set breaker. Wow, what an incredible way to finish this match. And kind of that last rally sums up the entire imagine what has been happening here for two hours 40 minutes and it was really hard to pick a winner at the end because both girls deserved it just the same and uh, yeah you gotta give so much credit to both of them i think we are still breathing hard here nick <laughs> that was quite a contest absorbing what a finale and you have to feel so much for Yafan, who gave so much to this contest. I think she's so tired that she forgot that's not really the way to get out of the court. <laughs> oh no, she's just picking up the towel. I know. Oh well. <laughs> Any which way will do right now, Danny. Yeah, you, you, you don't blame her because she just wants to get out of the court and, uh, and uh, try to recover from that. Obviously, she will be very disappointing to start with, but looking back at this match, she has to be so proud because she really gave it all. Yeah, the narrowest of margins, but she is in to the second week and speaking well to Andrea. Well done, what a match and what a match point. How did you pull that one off? Well, yeah, that was really difficult tiebreak and we all give our best and that was tough, you know. I only have too much point and I already missed one. The last point was just, you know, you just play like that and I'm so happy to win this match and also congrats for the Chinese player Yafan Wang to reach the third round here. It's a honor to play to Chinese in this amazing court. And thanks to all the fans here today who are supporting on us. Yafan played a great match. She was a tough, tough opponent for you. You served for it 5-3 or at 5-4 in the third set. You didn't make it, but you showed such mental strength. How do you do it? Can you share a little bit with us? Because we all need that mental strength. Yeah, Yafan Wang is a really solid player. She never gives up. She always put the ball back. And I feel a lot of pressure in this match to play against her. She had really good baseline stroke. And I just keep myself, uh, keep going, you know. You can't think about what's happened in the past. And let's go. And we will see what's happened. And at the end, I'm here and I won the match. That was unbelievable. That was unbelievable. In 2014, on this court right here, Li Na won the Australian Open, the first Chinese player ever to do it. You were 11 when that happened. Yes. Very small. Do you have any memories of that day? Of course, because I was sitting there in front of TV, uh, watched from the beginning until the end, and that final, I watched it more than 10 times. So I have a lot of memory. I mean, she's an unbelievable player, the first Asian woman who won the Grand Slam champion. Yeah, how you can don't remember that. I'm sure you on one day want to inherit that throne. Now I know that you love karaoke. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
What is your go-to song when you go to a karaoke bar? Well, depends if you talk about English, Chinese, or Spanish. All three we want to know. Well, don't tell me I have to sing here, please. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. We just want to know the song. Well, the English one I really like, uh, Love the Way You Lie. That was one of my favorite songs. And Chinese? Well, Chinese, I have too much. I mean, it's difficult to pick. I listen too much, really. Thank you so much. Into the second week. Well done. Yeah, what an engaging personality. And what a fight she had on her hands today. And that was the narrowest of victories, Daniela. Oh, absolutely. And it's so beautiful to see her personality, her mental strength, what Andrea asked about, just not thinking about the past and just look to the future. It's a cliche in our sport, but that's what kind of helped her to get through the finishing line. And uh, what a future for Chinese tennis. And uh, also nice to recognize how much Lina has meant to both players and uh, the reason why they were out there today. Yeah, it's not only a win that takes her into the second week, but it's a win that also takes her another step closer towards a place in the top 10, which obviously has a significant value going forwards. Yeah. But right now, the focus will be on rest, recovery, and a meeting with a French player in the shape of Ocean Dodan. I mean, there's so much to digest here is there anything that jumps out on these this particular page i mean obviously the winners 40 to 20 but then also too many, so many unforced errors but that was because of that consistency that Japan was able to put on the display and uh, the the stats at the match like this really go out of the window yeah. because it was at the end maybe about those two points in the tie break that made a difference and uh, yeah until the last point we were holding our breath which way this was going and the Chinese fans are definitely having probably one of the best days in the office. Um, yeah, just incredible stuff. Yeah, Super Saturday's off to a good start, isn't it? And you can see there it will be Ocean Dodan in the next round. Too many seats left in this section. Paolini's in there, Sviontek of course jumps out, Svitolina as well. But we hope you enjoyed that as much as we did, because that was a good one. We will leave you very shortly and be back with some men's singles coming up in about five minutes from now.